Actually, maybe we can stop by the armory. Oh, with a U. She pauses and looks curiously at me. Armory? You want to get a weapon? Yes! I'm going to get a... I'm going to beat... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill some bitches. Her question is careful, cautious. Uh, the goal is to blend in, right? It's weird that a person wearing leather armor is traveling unarmed. I look like a hostage or something. Hmm. You do have a point. Plus, it could come in handy. Yes! I'm going to fucking whack some bitches with a sword. Yes! Do you know how to use a weapon? All, again, although her voice holds no hostility, I can sense her caution. I practice kendo competitively? She blinks. It's a type of sword fighting where I come from. I see. Leanna falls silent and gazes out into the street. After an extended pause, she nods. Oh, she's, we're totally getting me a sword. Fuck yeah. We head to the forge, and where rows of blades ranging from long swords to short daggers hang from the wall. Oh, I'm totally gonna get a badass sword right now. Oh, that one looks cool. All of the blades look fairly plain, but the steel edges glint dangerously amidst the warm glow of the forge. Unlike the wait, okay. Unlike the previous shopkeeper, the metalsmith ignores us as he pounds blah, 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 ignores us as he pounds out a red hot blade. Oh, he's totally like ah oh, hell yeah. Sparks jump from the clinging metal, reminding me of fireflies. <laughs> Excellent job, buddy. You're great at this. Leanna lets me browse the swords. I reach for one that catches my eyes. As I gently remove it from the shelf, I miscalculate its weight and drop it. You calculated its weight at all? You misjudged its weight. Words, friend. Words. I want that one. Or I want mm, that one. I want one with the fancy stone. Uh, they all have fancy stones in them. Ooh, I like that one on the on the far left. I like that one. This is a big ass one right here. This is a dark one. Looks like uh, something. I don't know. I was going somewhere with that. Steel scratches the ground. The metal smith pauses in his work to glower a warning. Leanna looks on in shock. Careful. I quickly write the sword back up and curve it tightly. Leanna now watches me with intrigue. Is this the first time you've held a sword? Nah, no. I lived, bro. <laughs> it's not a miscalculation, though. I lived, bro. <laughs> I don't want to go with that. That's so. Oh, that's so good, though. I lived. <laughs> I have definitely held a sword. Held this. Held the sword. I'm shaking my head, I take a practice swing with the sword and it glides gracefully in the air. Lena looks impressed. Was that a move from your kendo? Me dropping it? Yeah, that's a move. I nod. Not bad. Oh, pace. I, sw <laughs> I swing again and the wind flows naturally. As sword cuts through the air with a sharp. Thwing! I can't help but admire how smoothly it slices. This is high quality craftsmanship. So I thought it was too light, and I dropped the bitch. And yet, like, mm, and and then this guy who is pissed off at me. I don't have any money. I'm just gonna. Can I just kill him, and then we'll be fine? No one will notice. As before, Leanna discusses with the shopkeeper when she returns, I strap the sword to my belt. I have a belt, for some reason. Who knew? We- Ugh, my hair. Come on, fix it. Come on, buddy. Like, to fix my- My mess of a head of hair here. Ugh, anyway. Ugh. We make one more stop to gather supplies for our travel. By the time we're finished, the sun is set and darkness blankets the sky. Wow. It's not that dark, though. The town is aglow with soft lights glint within houses and the lamp posts on the streets. As we pass by a lamppost, I peek inside and see a small crystal shining brilliantly. Using the lights to guide us, we find the inn. Oh, this is totally going to go so poorly. Oh, I can't wait. Excuse me. 
This is totally gonna go poorly. I love this. This is I, this is gonna be great. They're totally gonna like hardcore like ship us or something. I take a seat at one of the crude tables while Leanna talks to the innkeeper behind the bar. There are a, a scattering of other patrons, mostly men who sit alone, nursing a tankard of what I assume to be ale. <laughs> Hell yeah, about to get wasted! Woohoo! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, they're gonna totally try to flirt with Leanna. Leanna, I'm just gonna have to be like, back off, buddy. She's my girl. You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean. I stifle a yawn. Now that I've had a chance to sit down, I feel the full weight of my fatigue. Luckily, Leanna returns and hands me a key. This is your room for the night. It's right next Darn to mine. Darn it! <laughs> Balls! <laughs> Thought we were totally gonna be in the same room. Ah, uh, disappointing. Thanks! She nods. They should be coming out with our dinner soon. Then we should get to sleep. We have an early start tomorrow. Did I order? I want some, I want some, I want a cheeseburger. Oh god, this is gonna go poorly, isn't it? I already know. This is gonna go so bad. It's gonna, they're gonna bring us out like some kind of random shit. Oh, it's gonna be great. My stomach is gonna, they're gonna bring out like a live, like, I don't know, what would they bring out? Like a live, like something, something, I don't know. We'll find out. Stomach grumbles in anticipation. Sorry. Leanna smiles as she sips, sits in the empty stool next to mine. Our meals arrive and I stare at the bowl before me. It's a goopy, thick stew and looks about as appetizing as dog food, but it smells pretty good. Uh, what is this? It's stew. A what kind of stew? Rabbit. Delish. Uh, it doesn't taste like chicken. Hmm. A brief image of a cute, fluffy bunny flashes across my eyes. Is something wrong? Oh! <laughs> oh my god. I, f I love these guys. They're amazing. Oh, they're so good. They're like, oh, they're totally like making fun of like the offense, like people who get offended too easily. I only eat non GMO, all natural, vegan, certified, gluten free, 100% whole grains, no trans fat, grass fed, no preservative, organic pasture meals. What if I. S oh my god. Meat is murder, that's a lie. I like cheeseburgers too much for that. Meat is murder, nope, all good. I'm just gonna eat the rabbit. Is there normal stew? Nope, all, we're gonna go with it. It's fine. She's gonna look at me weird. I'm all about trying new foods. Nothing's wrong. This is fine. Thanks. I take a tentative bite of my stew. How is it? Oh, she's totally like, oh, she's totally concerned about me. I love her so much. I can pick how I think about it. Oh, Jesus. Amazing, different, or adequate. I think I'm gonna go with amazing, because if I can, I mean, this might be, I might, I could be lying. Like, this could just be like, ah, oh, like, I, I'm about to throw it up and I'm like, amazing. <laughs> I'll try amazing. This is even better than I expected. Leanna grins as she digs in. Wow. I finish eating, Leanna cleans her bowl, and the two of us head upstairs. She pauses in front of her room, and I stop in front of mine. Good night. Good night. I'm about to enter my room and I hear a small voice. Polly? Oh, it's still here. Have you been following us this whole time or did you lose us and find us again? The pango blinks twice and bounces. Boy, boy. Pongos aren't exactly welcomed everywhere. Why is that? Well, they absorb the energy around them, including crystals which are used to light lampposts. Other similar so they habits. absorb your energy source and yet you still bring them around everywhere okay ah I can see how that would be bad I think this guy knew to stay out of sight once we came but yet he still managed to find a way to teleport into the hotel eh, this mm, very smart boy what if someone sees him here as long as he doesn't stray too close to a crystal he'll be fine People only make a fuss when it looks like their crystal might be drained. Got it. She reaches towards the pango. Do you want to sleep with me tonight? Poi? She talked. 
<laughs> oh, I'm horrible. The pango snuggles against my leg. Leanna sighs. I thought as much. Oh, don't worry. I'll sleep with you, sweetheart. No, she. No. Come, like, don't be sad. We can cuddle or we can snuggle if you want. It's fine. I won't complain. She opens her door and flashes me one last smile. Sleep well. She disappears into her room. I open my door and step through. The pango perks up. Boy, boy. Let him in. I step away from the door and the pango hops in. As I close the door behind him, he continues to hop around the room as if inspecting it. Yawning widely, I collapse. <laughs> that was a good sound effect. I collapse onto the bed. The pango continues to circle the room. Are you looking for a good place to sleep? Boy. He suddenly leaps up and lands on my bed. Then he bounces to the foot of the bed and wiggles himself in a cozy nest by creating a small crater on top of the blanket. I can't help but grin at the little guy. Good night, pango. Boy, boy. Not capitalized. I roll over in bed and it's not too long before I'm fast asleep. Oh wow! I'm gonna dream about New York now! Hardcore Pokemon Center restoring music right there, dude. A knock on my door jolts me awake. I sit up straight in bed and barely notice a tiny yelp as the pango tumbles to the floor. Sorry, bud. Hello? The knocking stops. It's Leanna. Are you about ready? Ah, totally. I rub my eyes and blink the feeble rays of light outside. Uh, what time is it? It's past on. We need to get a move on if we want to make a good time. Dawn! There's no good reason anyone should be awake at this hour. I attempt to lay back at when the knocking starts again. Alright, alright, I'll be there in a minute. Honey, you need to let me sleep. You know, we could have slept together, then we wouldn't have had this problem. I'm not even saying we had to, like, even, like, fuck. We could have just snuggled. It would have been fine. There's a fun fact. I'm not actually much of a... that person. I would just rather snuggle. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Like, there's nothing better than just a cute girl to snuggle with. I... I don't have a problem. The noise stops. I yawn and stretch, then notice the pango on the floor. Uh, what are you doing on the floor, buddy? I knocked you over! Weren't you sleeping on the bed? The pango wiggles and shoots me an accusatory look. Poor, 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 poor. I glance at the slight indentation on my pillow and back at the blue mass on the floor. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to knock you off. He looks cautiously at me and then hops onto the bed, hops onto the bed and on up onto my head. Poor, poor. He, he nips at my hair, then ch chickles. Okay. I guess that means he's forgiven me. I push myself to my feet and begin to get begin getting dressed. Once I've grabbed all of my things, did I totally just like sleep in my boxers or what? Like, did I sleep in my jeans or whatever? I don't know. Once I've grabbed all of my things, I push open the door and nearly collide with Leanna again. Whoa! Are you ready to go? Oh, she was totally into it. Yeah. Leanna nods, then leads the way out of the inn. Oh, she was totally she totally wants me to crash into her again. I think she totally wants to suck on me, dude. Oh, yes. <laughs> I fucking hate myself. Over. Okay. I follow her through the town as we head north. It's a lot quieter than when we first arrived as the town gradually begins to wake up. We don't run into too many people on the street, although the shops aren't open yet. I can see the shopkeepers busy prepping for the day. Uh, excuse me. My apologies. Right before we reach, re, bleh, right before we reach the edge of town, a guard stops us. There's been heightened bandit activity reported on these roads. Yes, kill him! I got my sword. I'm ready to go, dude. Leanna's brows crease. Are the roads closed? No, but until we get a handle on the bandit activity, we're advising everyone to stay in ah, town. Ah, that. We can't stay. Where are you headed? We're headed to Illumia. The guard noticed the si bleh, the guard notices the sigil on Leanna's manipulator. I'm surprised everyone is just totally unfazed by the lack of physics. And when I say lack of physics, I really am only applying to the application of that lack of physics to two things in particular. Everyone's totally unfazed by it. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It's normal. Maybe like people don't reproduce in this game, in this world. It's fine. Hmm. Maybe no one has a penis. Does that mean she doesn't have a vagina? Then what do we do? 
I think we're just... I was about to say we're fucked, but then that that's not true at all. Shit. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm, I'm speechless. The guard notices the sigil on Leanna's manipulator. I like how I'm totally up with this with the vocab right now. I'm I called it a manipulator. You're a mage knight? She nods. As the guard turns his focus to me, I draw attention to the blade on my hip. <laughs> I'm I'm just like, yeah, dude, I'm totally ready to fucking cut them open. If they cross me, dude, they're going to they they'll be fucked. I'm gonna get them right in the fucking face. Yes. <laughs> he nods gruffly, then moves out of the Just way. Just be careful out there. Thanks, bro. Thank right on. Ugh. She motions for me to follow her. Ugh. I fucking love this. This having so much fun. Once we're back on the familiar dirt path, I take one last look at the Meadow Hill Village before refocusing on the road ahead of me. We're back. This is where we came from. <laughs> it's a visual novel. They can only have so many backgrounds. It's okay. I forgive you. Maybe. Our trek along the path is peaceful. The forest gradually awakens. Not there's a bug on my screen again. The forest gradually awakens with bird song and the scuttling of woodland animals. Apparently, there are still birds and also woodland. An Although I guess there are humans in this. It's fine. Having, I mean, we still don't know if they have penises or reproductive organs yet. <laughs> Having grown up in the city, the sounds of nature still startle me, and I glance at every rustle of the leaves. Leanna, though, seems unfazed. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Give me a second. Wait, so... Having grown up in the city, the sounds of nature still startle me, and I glance at every rustle of the leaves. Okay, I thought this was, like, totally explaining the lack of physics, so that, like, even the lack of physics, like, applies to everything. So everything just absurdly bounces up and down like that. I thought it was, you know, but it's it's fine. Her, her eyes routinely survey the, her surroundings. Suddenly she freezes. I nearly bump into her. What the? Shh. I fall silent as she listens. When she speaks, her voice is a whisper. Did you hear that? Totally. I strain my ears listening for anything out of place. Then I hear voices among the trees. Bandits? Strangled scream pierces the air, scaring a flock of birds into flight. Someone might be in danger. Yes! I'm- Ow! Ah! Ow. I think I stretched my arm too far. Ow. Yes, I'm gonna get to use my sword on some people. I'm gonna be charged for murder. It's gonna be great time. Does this kingdom have a court system? I don't know. Oh, someone might be in danger. We're totally going with this right now. Her previous caution abandoned, Leanna sprints towards the sound and I follow at her heels. Ow, my fucking arm. We both take cover as the trees open up, revealing a man in a trench coat surrounded by five bandits. One more bandit lies motionless on the... Oh. Upon seeing their fallen comrade, the bandits all... Oh, the bandits all unsheath their weapons. Three of them hold long swords and two of them point guns. What kind of guns? Are they actually... Like, can they kill you? The trench-coated man doesn't stir. His dark hair falls over his eyes and I can't see his face. You won't get away from us this time. Oh, totally. <laughs> I love this guy. Take him out. A man pushes his coat, pushes open his coat, and draws two guns as the bandits cover. Oh, converge. Leanna sets her jaw. Stay here. Nah, dude. I'm totally. I'm. I'm ready to go. Like panic at the disco. I'm ready to go, dude. I just give me. Just tell me who to kill, and they dead. They be dead. They will soon meet them, maker. Ugh. As soon as the words fall from her lips, she races out from the trees. Her hair whips behind her, and her white coattails billow in a graceful arc. Words? She moves faster than a human, as if the air pushing her forward, or if the air is pushing her forward instead of dragging her down. Her gauntlet hand clenches. love this. This is so cool. Whoa!
Whoever, if this is the same guy that composed the music of the last game, this man is a freaking genius. Oh my god. Anyway. Her gauntlet hand clenches into a blue and a blue sphere glows, then disappears as she smashes her fist into the nearest bandit. He flies away from her and crashes against a tree before crumpling into a heap. A mage knight? She must be with him. Or she's after the bounty. Take her out too! The mysterious man fires a hail of purple blasts at the bandits, catching one of them in the chest. Leanna deflects the sword from another bandit with her own blade. Oh, is this Zack? This might be Zack. I can't just sit here and do nothing, I have to help. In order Leanna's command, I unsheath my sword and charge into battle. Yes! Oh, are we battling right now? Oh, so there's a mini game. So since this is the early access version. Interesting. So I guess it's just not here yet. It doesn't really matter. I I kind of curious about it, but I I'm really excited to play this. So I'm just going to win my fight. I mean, I'm it's not like why would I lose? <laughs> Anyone heard? Okay, so I guess there's like part of it where she would like in the mini game cuz like, you know, she totally would have been like, "Why are you bad? Why are you fighting? You're inexperienced." Whatever. Hey, she told me to stay there, and yet I did so good. Oh wow! But I do have bruises, though. I do. Ch I do a gentle pat down of myself and wince at my bruises. Nothing major. Lena nods, then fidgets with her manipulator. All of a sudden, I'm hot again. Ugh. Okay. Back at it. Lena nods, then she fidgets with her manipulator. I think I already said that. It is Zach. I knew it. <laughs> the man stays silent he's, as he inspects his gun. Now, I, now that I have a better look at him, I realize, uh, there's no Z. I realize that although his fierce scowl makes him seem tough, he doesn't look all that much older than me. His hair is a, has a habit of falling around his eyes, but he, as he pushes it back, I notice a long scar. Oh yeah, nice. Cut across one of his eye. One eye. Once satisfied, he tucks his gun back into his belt and gets to his feet. He nods at us. Thanks. <laughs> I love it. Then he turns away. Wait! He pauses. Where are you headed? Why? He's totally like, ah, Nate, ah, Nate had to do like so fucking emo for this shit. Aw. Why? There might be more bandits around. We should team up if we're going in the same direction. Safety in numbers. Dude, I do I have some competition right now. He studies us in stony silence. Then he gaze his gaze flicks to her manipulator and he relaxes slightly. Where are you going? We're headed to Illumia. Me too. <laughs> I love the genuine emotion in this. It's just like, me too. Leanna nods. You're from the Mage Guild? Yes, I'm Leanna. Uh, Zack. Zack. Oh, totally. Zack. All of us glanced at the little blue panga who seemingly popped out of nowhere. And uh, this is our little friend. I see. I see. Uh, he's totally like, oh, I love this. The pango blinks at Zack, who stares him down. <laughs> the pango bounces uncertainly. Boy. Dude, they're having a staring contest right now. He blinked. Zack's unblinking. He just blinked. He never never wavers, so the pango scoots behind my leg for safety. Now that introductions are over, let's get moving. You didn't really change his voice that much. Zack waits for us to collect our things, and once we're all set, we head back onto the road. Leanna and I lead the way, the pango keeping pace with us while Zack hangs a few steps behind us. Okay, so we can make more conversation here. I want to know how you move so fast, girl! Uh, that's so- that was a little bit weird, but she doesn't know anything, right? We still don't even know if she has reproductive organs. Okay, let's totally- this is fine. Ugh. Leanna, I saw you during the fight. How were you able to move so fast? Magic to manipulate my movements. Oh. Cheater! <laughs> my guy is so fixated on, like, the RPG shit right now. Oh, so, like, putting on a speed buff. 
like shifting the draft to move me forward, or using a breeze to help lift me during jumps. Damn, that sounds awesome! I wonder if she knows what damn means. Is curse words the same? Is that a the curse word? Mm -hmm. behind, I'll use my wind to give you a little boost. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. You're the best. <laughs> that would be amazing. I can already imagine myself running like the wind. Leanna seems to be pleased by my reaction. So now we're just gonna totally, we're gonna totally, hey Zach, you're a bitch. So what type of you gun mean is his that? discharger? Oh, we're totally, we're totally going in on Leanna right now. He's totally, he's not even here. He's not, he's like, what's a discharger? I hear a sound behind us. Zach raises an eyebrow when I turn to look Did at him. Did you hit your head or something? Leanna looks Jeez. a little uncomfortable. Not exactly from around here. I Zach see. crosses his arms. So uh, it's discharge. It's a weapon that uses crystal spheres to power it. So it is. So Maybe? it is a gun. The spheres are the bullets. Well, it's kind of the magazine in some sense because it's used to fire bullets, or in this case, bolts of energy. Leanna looks uncertain. Although it's made sense in my head, I can see why she might be confused. Never mind. I got it. Thanks. She smiles. I feel Zach's gaze on me, but his expression is hard to read. So, I understand this. I know why she was in the Mage Guild, because she has this little thing, this gauntlet or whatever. I, I understand that. So, I have nothing. Neither Leanna nor Zach seem particularly chatty. Uh. Wow! My character with the most astute observation in the history of time. What a guy. <laughs> He's so dumb. Oh my god. Well, okay. Well, it looks like that guard was telling the truth. There definitely are yeah. bandits on this road. There's something in her voice which makes me think she doesn't completely agree. Of what is it? Well, for bandits, they were pretty well equipped. She stares hard at Zack, but he doesn't react. Oh! What does that mean? Are they not bandits? I'm not Leanna sure. continues to look at Zack. Ah! They're bandits. Zack! Yeah! Mm -hmm. She looks sharply at Zack, sure. obviously caught off guard. That didn't sound too convincing. The subject drops, but I still feel a little uneasy. If those guys weren't bandits, then who were they, and why were they attacking Zack? The, the questions circle my mind as the conversation lulls to silence. Leanna leads the way, though she seems to have something on her mind. You should ask about it, because that's what good people do. You have to be curious about her, although she might not want to tell it, because she's kind of reserved. But also, you should be just make sure she's okay. Give her a little hug, you know what I'm saying? Just all good make sure assert your dominance as the dom the alpha male i don't know zach remains drag oh fuck zach trails from behind he remains on heightened alert we traveled together for quite some time with no further interruptions i could feel my legs start to burn from all the walking <laughs> 